I'm the Sustainable Cleveland Manager for the Mayor's Office of Sustainability and also the co-chair of the Forest City Working Group along with Courtney Blaschka. Thank you today for joining Cleveland's Green Gold, Our Trees breakout session. Our moderator for this session is Sandra Albro, Director of Community Partnerships at Holden Forests and Gardens. Thank you, Sandra. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, today, we will be talking about Cleveland's Green Gold, Our Trees, and we will be hearing from the Mayor's Office of Sustainability at the City of Cleveland, from Western Reserve Land Conservancy, and from Holden Forests and Gardens. All of these institutions, plus 40 more, are um, members of the Cleveland Tree Coalition which is an informal collaborative that is working together to implement the 2015 Cleveland Tree Plan. A lot of the re resources that we'll be talking about today can be downloaded from the Cleveland Tree Coalition's website. I put a URL in the chat and I'll bump that a few times um, as we talk today, but that's www.clevelandtrees.org. Our first speaker today will be Jason Wood, um, Chief of Sustainability at the, at the City of Cleveland. Um, if you need to see a larger version, just remember um, to click on the double click on the presentation to enlarge that on your screen so you can see it a bit better. Jason? Jason, you're muted. Jason will be right back with us. Um, all right, so actually while we are waiting for Jason, um, just can you put in the chat, have you read the Cleveland Tree Plan before or taken a look at it? Back. I'm back. Okay. Jason Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that, everybody. Um, so let me go ahead and pull this up now that I'm muted here. Um, so we always like to start as we talk about trees kind of by focusing on why trees matter. Um, and for us, I, I think this audience here is probably pretty familiar with this set of benefits that we see for trees in terms of ozone reduction, removing ozone from the air, reducing greenhouse gas emissions, all of the neighborhood benefits um, that we like to think about and understanding that trees really are a pretty critical part of our urban fabric. And if you heard kind of in the opening um, remarks that I made at the beginning of the summer, we talked a little bit more detail about some of the economic and health benefits that we see from trees. So again, we really do see a lot of benefits that can be kind of tangibly quantified um, from an environmental standpoint, $11.4 million of benefits um, from our existing canopy. Um, we see a $26 million lifetime carbon storage benefit, um, $3.6, $3.7 million of adverse health incidents avoided. So trees really are an important part of our urban fabric. Now, we'll talk a little bit as we get into some of the updates, I think, um, about some of the effects of tree canopy loss on those numbers, but we still see a pretty strong and an important benefit to communities based upon having a good tree canopy in place. And this is really one of the reasons that at the city of Cleveland, we've tried to spend a lot of time and energy into our long-term canopy planning efforts. Um, kind of looking back at a timeline of this going back about 11 years or so, I think a lot of our longer term canopy planning efforts really ramped up with the creation of the Office of Sustainability in 2009. So we kind of got together at that first summit, uh, Mayor Jackson kind of launched this broader initiative, but certainly had trees and green spaces as a, a critical component of that. As we really started to work through our development process and the first climate action plan that we developed in 2013, um, we included this kind of specific um, action of developing and implementing an urban tree plan to grow the canopy. So that was kind of the impetus for a lot of our more targeted and focused work around trees that the city's undertaken in the last seven or eight years. So um, critical along this timeline in 2014, we got our county, the Cuyahoga County Urban Tree Canopy Assessment, which really helped us 
um, both in the city, but in the broader county perspective, understand what our canopy looks like. And I think um, we learned from that, that our canopy had dropped to about 18.9%, um, which was low. And I think this really reiterated to us the need to really ramp up some of our tree efforts. And that kind of started to manifest itself in 2015 with the Cleveland Tree Plant. Um, so we developed this through a cooperative community focused approach. Um, and we'll talk about some of the specifics because that's really the document that has guided most of the work that we've been doing for the last five or six years around trees in the city of Cleveland. Um, coming out of that process, the, tree, the Cleveland Tree Coalition, which had emerged really from, from that effort and really kind of started to bring together a lot of the stakeholders who are working in this space, um, set this, uh, this aggressive canopy goal of getting to 30% by 2040. Um, the city formally adopted that in 2018 um, through our CAP process. So we officially incorporated that as one of our, our, our really important targets through our, our climate action planning process. Um, and we've really kind of used that to move forward. Um, last year, we saw an update to the urban canopy assessment, um, and it didn't deliver us the news we wanted to hear. I think we saw continued decreases. Now, the decrease has gotten smaller over time. And I think there are some reasons why we've, we've got to be realistic about why that happened and how that occurred. But we saw that our tree canopy dropped to about 17.9%. So we're seeing continued reduction. Like I said, it's slowed down a little bit, but it is still moving um, in the wrong direction. Um, and this week, actually, we got a, a really good release on the Cleveland Tree Plan update. And I think Elizabeth is going to talk through a little bit of what's in that. So when we did the original tree plan, and I want to spend a minute on this because it really helps shape and guide things. So Originally released in 2015, it was an effort that was coordinated through the Office of Sustainability, but it was really a community-driven effort. Over 25 organizations came together and participated in that process. And we really looked at, at kind of modeling things off of um, some of these indicators of, this, of, of a sustainable urban forest. And you can see those in the blue boxes on the right. So really understanding what the condition of our trees were, kind of the, the positioning and the qualifications and the capabilities of all the players, and then understanding how our management approach fixed together. I think as we did that process, we learned that there were obviously some areas where we needed to make some improvements and make some changes. So we started to structure that work around three goals. Um, the first of those was really to think of trees as critical community infrastructure. The second was to reverse the trend of canopy loss. And then the third was to basically bring this full stewardship of tree infrastructure into place. Now under each of these, we had a series of breakout actions and things like that were owned by different agencies and different groups. But this is really the overall structure that's guided the efforts around trees that we've we've really worked to take for, um, like I said, about five or six years now. So kind of walking through some of those individual actions that we were looking at to get a sense of what we're doing and where we've made some progress and where we've got some challenges remaining. So one of the things, the actions that came out of there was to really establish a unified voice and formalize partnerships. So successfully kind of establishing trees in Cleveland and really growing our canopy has a lot of different people and players moving through this space. Um, so both internal to the city and then external with our, our private side partners, we really needed to make sure that we were all moving and pulling in the same direction. From a city planning process that meant bringing the Office of Sustainability, um, the Department of Public Works, Division of Urban Forestry and sec the Urban Forestry section that operates in that structure, bringing them to the table looking at our capital projects, getting our utilities departments to the tables, collaborating and coordinating with city planning and building and housing. So there's a lot of different places that touch on trees and tree canopy in the city operations. So we've worked hard to kind of pull that group together and that group has some regular discussions about how we can do things a little bit better and where some of those touch points may be. But we also kind of want to look at our external partnerships as well. And um, this is, I think, going to run through pretty much every presentation you see today is the Tree Coalition. The Tree Coalition has evolved as really an important um, collection of organizations that are all committed to restoring our urban tree canopy. Um, you can see uh, kind of on the, the, the left side of the screen there, um, my left maybe, um, looking at the Tree Coalition Executive Committee. But we've grown membership over time, so we continue to see folks making commitments and sharing interest in growing canopy across our region. So this is really kind of how we've looked to formalize some of those partnerships and get everybody kind of looking at the same goals, coordinating efforts as best as possible and moving in the same direction. So the canopy goal itself, um, we talked about that very briefly, was set in, in established in 2017 and from the Office of Sustainability standpoint, adopted into our climate action plan in 2018, which means this is the city's official position in terms of what we're trying to accomplish from a tree canopy standpoint. 
Um, our goal is to get to 30% by 2040. Um, that requires a heavy lift. Um, we, we need to see about 30,000 new trees per year planted for us to get close to that target. Um, I think there are some real challenges with getting to that point. And I think we've seen those play out over the last five to six years. Um, looking at, at, at getting and successfully establishing that, that, num that high number of trees is an expensive proposition. And we haven't seen the funding available to get to that level. If we look at average planning costs, um, there's some, some specific reasons that the city's average planning cost runs a little higher due to right of way planning and some other things that we'll talk about here in a second. But our average planning and establishment cost for a tree is about $500. Um, so if we looked at that as, as, as purely a city commitment, you're looking at you know, 15, 12 to $15 million of expenses to get to that 30,000 trees per year. Um, the other barrier to doing that is that we don't have the space in the right of way for those. Um, we've we've done a deep dive on our own infrastructure and, and have started to understand this. And there aren't enough plantable locations in the right of way for us to get there. So we've got to look at other options of a mix of um, other public spaces, of private locations. So looking at some of the large landowners, which Sandra is going to talk about here in a little bit, is critical for us to do this. And this is just a lot of of, of kind of capacity and inventory to build as well. Um, so I think understanding what's available in the market to do this is, is another one of those challenges. Uh, a fourth challenge that I would add to this is we see a relatively decent number of opt-outs. So as we look to do right-of-way planning, property owners have the ability to opt out of that program. Um, it varies from cycle to cycle, uh, but we tend to see between 10 to 20 percent of property owners opt out of having a right-of-way right tree planted in front of their property. So these are all things that we kind of have to think about as we kind of look at what's happened with Canopy and how that goal gets established. Um, I talked a little bit about the Canopy and, and what we learned from that Canopy assessment. Um, again, we saw that about 17.9% um, is where our Canopy number sits at now. It's a decline of about 4.8%. So even though we're gaining about 1,200 acres per year, we lose about 1,600 acres at the same time. Um, that rate of loss is slower, as you can see, but Still not something that we're 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 really um, uh, we're really comfortable with. So we've got some work to do to start to reverse that progress. So for us at the city, that really starts with understanding what our tree inventory looks like. Um, so one of the actions outlined in the tree plan is to to develop a tree inventory, and we started to look through the model of what it would take to do that from scratch. And we saw estimates come back to us as, as much of a million dollars to get that type of work done. So that's a that's we're in a limited funding environment. That was more cost than I think we were ready to say. Let's let's move forward without really taking a deep dive into what we do. So our urban forestry staff is out as they do field observations. They're collecting data on city-owned trees. So what our challenge here is to evaluate the quality of that data to see if we can determine how extensive any additional inventory efforts would would be. So what you see kind of on the the right of the screen here is just a sampling of one of the trees that we found and what that looks like. So. We're really trying to get to that ANSI A300 standard. Um, so we're looking at location, size, type, condition, maintenance required, health, um, sidewalk issues. So kind of trying to understand the full spectrum of data that we would need to, to make decisions about the tree inventory and the tree asset as we move forwards. This happens to be one of our more common types of trees. Um, our most common trees in the cities are maple. Um, this is a maple, this one's a little bit larger. Our tree inventory is getting younger um, due to some issues that we've we've had as we do some replacements, um, so our, this one's a little bit uh, a little bit larger and a little bit older than what we see as kind of our most common plural um, uh, category. So where are we in that process? We've gotten all the data geocoded into our GIS system. Um, you can see kind of a map right now of where all those trees look and shake out across the city. So every green dot on that map, and they're a little hard to see here. Um, is a, a tree that exists in our tree tracker database. So what we want to do ultimately is take this data and migrate it into our asset management system. The city does most of its asset management through a, a, a system called CityWorks. Um, our utilities department uses it, the streets department uses it. So we're making the slow transition to get everybody into that same system. We're going to move the tree inventory and data into that once we get there. So you can see um, we've got about 77,000 trees mapped. We estimate that's a little bit under where our actual number of trees is. We think it's probably closer to 85 to 90,000 trees. So we're going through those efforts. Additionally, as we looked at mapping those trees, we started to map the available planning locations. 
And right now we've identified 21,000 available planning right-of-way locations. So what we're really trying to understand is how do we fill in those gaps and how do we support the larger amount of work that's still to come. Um, I mentioned that we need to do some QAQC work on that. I, I don't think we're comfortable yet saying that this is a tree inventory. That has a very specific meaning that we want to make sure we've got all of the relevant data that, that exists and is accurate and is up to date in there as much as possible. So we're looking to do some QAQC work on that, ex that existing data to really understand how good it is. And as we look to do that before we migrate it into the, the asset management system, um, you'll, we want to make sure that it's good and it's accurate and it's up to date. Uh, we're gonna, you might hear in some of these other sessions that they're, we're looking at more neighborhood-based inventory. So as neighborhoods kind of move from inventory, we do these inventories from neighborhood to neighborhood. We wanna make sure that we've got this a, a similar data standard. So we're, we're working through the uh, uh, Office of Urban Forestry to really understand what that data standard ought to look like so we can then begin to propagate that. So we can take that information from those neighborhood level inventories and bring it in so that we can kind of create a more robust um, asset system that we can track longer term. So we talked in the tree plan about planning with a purpose and, and um, one of our guiding principles is that planning is one thing but we're more for, focused on establishing trees uh, and when we talk about that in the right of way there's a lot of stuff on here it really means planting the right tree in the right place at the right time. Um, so when we get to kind of right of way planting, we're using a larger caliper tree. So we're tending to be planting a 1.75 to 2.25 caliper. Um, and then we're really looking at what is the right type of tree in that location from a root standpoint, from a, a long term establishment standpoint, and then lining that up to the planting season. Um, so this year, for example, we've planted about 300 trees in the spring. Um, we've got um, uh, right now we're working through getting another 1600 in in the fall and then we actually ended up moving six to 700 to the spring because we wanted to put a different tree in these locations. So we deferred some of those into the spring um, to make sure that we're not kind of putting trees in at the wrong time of year. Uh, trees are not spread equally across the city. I think that's one of the big lessons that we've looked at from our canopy data and some of the work through the tree plan, uh, both the original plan in 2015 and the update in 2020. So what we've tried to do is follow an equity-based approach to planning moving forward. So as we look at new plans, we're really trying to target them into the wards that have the most need in terms of canopy coverage. Um, one of the limits to this approach, though, is these are not always the places where we have appropriate available planning locations along the right-of-way. Uh, so we're kind of looking through that. We're also taking a look to see if there's any correlation between those neighborhoods and the rate of rejection to see if that's a challenge. It's, we don't have a good answer on that yet, but that's coming in. Um, a little bit down the road. Um, we talked initially about um, kind of some of the benefits, the health benefits and the environmental benefits that kind of come with trees. The tree coalition and the tree plan update that we have now has some really great neighborhood level data on how those benefits are shared. So we want to use that data moving forward to build kind of a more enhanced equity focus to our approach. Um, so that we can be more intentional with linking our planning, um, our targeted planning areas to areas that have more need based on some of those social determinants of health and some of the other environmental goals that we have. This kind of shows you how our planning has changed over the last five years, um, six years. Uh, prior to 2020, we were planning on average about 400 trees a year. Um, this year, we're going to end up planning about 1,900, a little over 1,900. And that's largely due with the extra due to the extra million dollars of planning that um, was added into the budget this year. Last year at the Sustainability Summit, uh, Mayor Jackson committed to spending an extra million dollars a year in planning for the next 10 years. And we can really see the effect of that on our planning process. So we're seeing a pretty dramatic increase in the year over year planning volumes due to that investment. Uh, maintenance uh, and preservation, um, this is, is equally as key. I think one of the lessons that we've learned is that planning, we, we aren't going to be able to plant our way out of this entirely. We've got to make sure we're following proper preservation and maintenance techniques. Our urban forestry um, uh, team really follows this industry standard best practices relative to tree care. So they're looking at those ISA best management standards. They're following the ANSI standards for, for um, um, pruning and management and kind of all of those things. But a lot of the tree maintenance happens outside of the, the uh, urban forestry team. It's, it's happening with our utilities. So we're really trying to work and collaborate with our utilities to make sure that they're, tr they're trimming and pruning in a way that ensures the long-term viability and, and health of the tree. Um, we've got two 
two electric utilities that we have to coordinate with. Um, we coordinate pretty close with uh, Cleveland Public Power. Um, they're another city department, city division, city agency. So we, we can work pretty closely with them to collaborate and ensure that the trees are trimmed um, in a timely fashion, consistent with standards, um, but also done in a way that allows the urban forestry crews to continue their work. Um, urban forestry crews can't work around live wires, so CPP and CEI have to do that work for us. So that's a critical touch point and point of collaboration. Um, we've had a lot of conversations with CEI recently regarding tree trimmings. Um, we've worked with them. We've shifted from an eight, got them to shift from an eight-year trim cycle to a four-year trim cycle. So maybe not as much drastic trimming as we've seen at other instances going on there. And we also, our urban forestry folks, work with them to kind of conduct field visits um, and really reviews their plan, work with the CEI foresters, um, and has to sign off on what they intend to do from a tree trimming standpoint. So um, we're really trying to work through that process and, and, and it's, is there, it says questions, but I think we're gonna wait until the end for questions. Um, and with that, I guess I'll turn it back over to you, Sandra. Great, thank you, Jason. Um, do continue to place your questions in the chat. Um, I'm, I'll be, I'm reading the chat and jotting them down. We'll have a chance to address questions after Courtney has spoken. Um, for some of them, like the question about the utilities, Jason did have a chance to answer that in his talk um, after the question was posed. But if it's not, you know, if you still have further questions about that, then uh, please put that in the chat. So I'm going to share my screen now. Um, will be Elizabeth Grace, Director of Urban Fundraising at Western Reserve Land Conservancy. Elizabeth will be talking to us about the five-year update that Jason, or the progress report that Jason was talking about. And that progress report is entitled the Cleveland Tree Plan 2020 Tree Canopy Progress Report. Um, if you'd like to see the report in full, you can download that from www.clevelandtrees.org. So Elizabeth. Thanks, Sandra. So yeah, Sandra mentioned, I'm talking about the uh, Tree Canopy Progress Report, which was released earlier this year. It was funded by the Cuyahoga County Urban Tree Canopy Grant Program through a grant to Cleveland Neighborhood Progress. And it reviews the progress in implementing the 2015 Cleveland Tree Plan that Jason talked about earlier. Uh, it utilized the 2019 Cuyahoga County Urban Tree Canopy Assessment data to highlight changes in the tree canopy that occurred between 2011 and 2017. Uh, you can go to the next slide, Sandra. So the great news um, was that over the course of those uh, five years or four years, um, the Cleveland Tree Coalition, which grew from five organizations in 2015 to 40 organizations, planted close to 12,000 trees. Um, in addition, the coalition gave away uh, at no cost another 15,000 trees to residents of the city of Cleveland. Uh, next slide, please. So as Jason mentioned, um, the not so good news was that despite our efforts, uh, we continued to see a canopy loss of close to 5,000 trees per year. Um, so Cleveland now, as, as we discussed, is at um, a little under, is around 18% and will continue to fall to 14.8% by 2040 if we don't make some progress. So the cost of that, you can go to the next slide. The, the cost of canopy loss, um, as Jason mentioned, um, impacts the environment as well as human health. Um, the environmental loss benefits per year are estimated to be about $1.3 million. And you can find all of these, um, this information on the full report that's on the Cleveland Tree Coalition website. Uh, next slide. And then the health benefits um, to the residents of the city of Cleveland are over $3 million a year. So as you can see here, that impacts respiratory systems, um, asthma rates, mortality, loss of school and work days. So it's an incredible impact on the city that will continue if we don't reverse the canopy loss. And next slide. 
Um, as part of the Tree Canopy Progress Report, um, there was also an updated neighborhood needs assessment. And in looking at the different population statistics and socioeconomic factors, neighborhoods in the city of Cleveland are rated as having a high need, a moderate need, or a low need. So um, for those of you that are working in Cleveland neighborhoods, it might be helpful for you to reference this type of information. You could use it in your own work or in fundraising in order to demonstrate the need for trees in your communities. Uh, next slide, please. So how are we gonna fix this problem? Well, um, we're trying to meet the goal of 30% tree canopy by 2040. Um, and so as part of the canopy progress report, uh, there were five different scenarios laid out that um, show options for addressing the need for tree canopy. Next slide, please. So um, the most ambitious uh, tree canopy goal scenario involves planting 28,000 trees at a cost of $8 million a year um, over the next 20 years to get to 30% by 2040. Next slide, please. Um, basically, another uh, currently, we're currently we're planning about 2,300 trees a year as um, the Cleveland Tree Coalition. So if we continue to do that at a cost of about $600,000 a year, um, over the course of the next 20 years, as we mentioned earlier, we believe that the tree canopy will continue to fall. So it, although we are making progress and getting trees in the ground, we need to do more. Next slide, please. So if we try to try a scenario of planting trees to balance the current loss, um, basically uh, doubling the amount of trees planted per year at a cost of $1.7 million. Um, it's estimated that we could reach, well, we would basically maintain where we're at right now, which is a almost 18% tree canopy cover. Next slide, please. Um, to start to reverse the trend of loss, we would need to plant close to 12,000 trees per, per year at a cost of 3.5 million which would hopefully put us at around 21% tree canopy coverage by 2040. Next slide, please. And if we really ramp up our efforts and are getting 15,000 trees per year in the ground uh, at a cost of 4.7 million, we could increase the tree canopy cover by 22, up to 22% 20, in 20 years. Um, another effort that the Cleveland Tree Coalition undertook this year um, was the exploration of creating a, an urban tree nursery in Cleveland. Um, Cleveland Neighborhood Progress received funding through the Cuyahoga County Urban Tree Canopy Grant Program and completed a study in conjunction with the Davie Resource Group to look at the feasibility of can we um, start a, an urban tree nursery in the city of Cleveland. So at this point, that study actually has been completed. Um, it will be released soon along with an RFP that in coordination with the Cleveland Tree Coalition. Um, so there will be an opportunity for organizations in the city of Cleveland to um, complete the RFP in order to possibly work toward starting a tree nursery in Cleveland. Another partner in that actually was Tree Pittsburgh. Um, and so the we're looking at, and if you're familiar with their model, um, it would be, it was something, it will be something similar to their model in, in Pittsburgh. Um, next slide, please. So currently the Cleveland Tree Coalition, as I mentioned, has 40 um, partner organizations, as Jason said also. Um, and, uh, in 2018, I believe the coalition started um, a strategic planning process in order to evaluate how the coalition was working and where we wanted to go from here. As part of that process, an executive committee was created, and these are the current members of the executive committee of the coalition. Um, somewhat recently, the executive committee chose Western Reserve Land Conservancy as the future fiscal agent of the coalition and a uh, physical home of, of future staff. Um, we will also serve as a chair or co-chair of that coalition. So some of the new goals that were included in the, in the tree canopy update um, include 
recognizing trees as critical community infrastructure, reversing the trends of canopy loss, which we've talked about, um, assuming full stewardship for the tree infrastructure and um, raising large amounts of additional funds um, in order to plant all the trees in the city of Cleveland. We know that our work over the past five years has made an enormous difference in Cleveland. Um, and we are we're pleased that the awareness of the connection between a healthy tree canopy and a thriving community is at an all time high. The coalition looks forward to continuing to work diligently to meet our goal. Thank you. Great, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, there was an important point in the comments that I just wanted to address really quickly, and that was that planting is, is essential, but what about the protection of existing trees? And that comes from Ann Armstrong. Um, the costs, the estimates that are included there in, do include maintenance of tree canopy. Um, maintaining the trees that we have and not losing additional trees is an important part of those models. Um, so we have to maintain the canopy that we have currently and then plant on top of that. So I'm going to be talking to you about another um, report that came out and along with the five-year update to the Cleveland Tree Plan. And this report started about a year ago um, when a question was posed to us, who are the 25 largest landowners in Cleveland? Because if we knew who these landowners were and understood more about, you know, the tree canopy that they have, the problems that they're encountering, the needs that they have, and the barriers that they have to planting trees and protecting their existing canopy, maybe that would give us some information that could be useful to everybody. So we embarked on a study to look at the 25 largest landowners, and this isn't meant to put anyone in the hot seat, but it really does allow us to kind of focus efforts um, on a narrower um, you know, group of stakeholders to fully understand what some of the barriers are to tree planting and protection. This map that you see here shows the distribution of land that is owned by the 25 largest landowners in Cleveland. So it, it comprises about one third of land area in Cleveland or 28,600 parcels. Tree cover amongst these largest landowners is 21%, so that means 21% of their land area is shaded by trees, and that's slightly above the city average of 18% that Jason referenced earlier. Together, the 25 largest landowners own 38% of Cleveland's urban forest. So it does seem to be that we could learn a lot from um, this group of landowners. Now, uh, an additional landowner you could think of would be all of the private residential homeowners. Um, they could be thought of as like the 26th largest landowner in Cleveland. Private residential landowners own over an, another third of land area in Cleveland. So they own 35% of the city of Cleveland. They own 43% of Cleveland's urban forest. So Jason was talking earlier about how um, planting on tree lawns, the right of way in public places is really important. But here we can see that engaging with private landowners is also incredibly important. So the large landowners do include public entities, but they also include institutions, parks, cemeteries, um, and other types of privately held land. Um, so it's really going to take a concerted effort amongst all of us to move the needle in tree canopy. So this map um, just takes the 25 largest landowners. It shows you um, who those landowners are and kind of you know, how um, their parcels are grouped. So in the southwest corner of Cleveland, of course, that is um, the airport. Um, you can see some of the, um, you know, other, the, the land is pretty evenly distributed across the city. Included within the report is detailed information about each landowner, the number of parcels that they own, um, the amount of city land area. So even though these large landowners have a lot of land, um, most of them have less than 1% of city land area. So even amongst them, you know, like we, we're not going to move the needle a lot by just engaging one or two. 
Tree canopy, um, as of 2017, varies considerably amongst the landowners from just 1% um, to over 50% tree canopy cover on um, their land. Overall, tree canopy has changed, has trended downward um, amongst the largest landowners like it has with the city of Cleveland as a whole. And if we looked at the, the possible land area, these 25 largest landowners um, could have for trees. See that if, if the possible area, so that excludes buildings and roads and sidewalks, but it includes things like parking lots that could be converted um, you know, to pervious parking or to, that could have tree cover. Um, you know, up to 73% of land um, amongst the largest landowners could sport trees. So, so these largest landowners could really move the needle, needle on tree canopy. So this just shows uh, an, the map of the largest landowners kind of by type. So municipal land is highlighted here in pink. Um, you can see institutions, particularly like hospitals and universities, um, such as on the east side here of Cleveland. Parks are highlighted in green. And this is how tree canopy varies amongst the largest landowners. So darker green here indicates higher um, levels of tree canopy cover up to 80% or more. And then amongst the, the private residential landowners. So here you can see the distribution again of private residential land. And um, in general, private residential land closer to, this, to downtown has less tree canopy than um, private residential land as you move out um, closer to the city limits. And that holds true for all types of parcels in Cleveland. So then, in sum, 68% of land is owned by these 26 largest landowners. They have about 22% existing tree cover, and they, can, they manage 80% of our urban forest. If all of the large landowners got together and planted every available surface uh, with trees, they could alone take Cleveland from 18% tree canopy cover to 52% tree canopy cover. So again, like this isn't reasonable. We're not advocating that everyone you know, pulls up all of their parking lots and plants trees. But it does, um, again, give us a way to target our efforts to, to listen, learn, understand what the barriers are to planting within a subset of our landowners in Cleveland and extrapolate that out to everybody. <clears throat> so this is an example of a roadmap that we're building with, in the Cleveland Tree Coalition. So from the largest landowners and also from community groups who work a lot with residents, the common question is, we're on board, we just don't know what to do, and we don't know what to do first. So can you help provide some suggestions for how we can improve tree canopy in our land? So we're starting to chart out a roadmap that takes you all the way you know, from the simplest action, which is to just go out and plant a tree on your property, all the way down to how um, different stakeholders can become invested in more systemic change. So um, this list we're organizing kind of by level of engagement as you move down the list, it, it kind of suggests higher levels of engagement. Included within the roadmap will be links to resources so that if you would like to take action, um, on, to take one of these actions that's listed here, you'll have resources for how to do that. So it could be, um, after you plant a tree, you could um, create an Arbor Day celebration in your community, um, for example. You could calculate your existing tree canopy cover by going to the county planning's website and looking up your property. They'll tell you um, by parcel what existing tree canopy cover is for different properties. You could inventory your trees. You could characterize the species, the size, the condition. And from there, you could start to calculate the benefits that your trees are providing. Kind of moving on to more abstract things. Um, <clears throat> you could um, talk about the benefits that your trees provide um, to your constituents. You could demonstrate best practices. Um, you could work with contractors who are um, you know, certified, who utilize best practices. You could work with my minority owned business contractors who are certified. So um, the list really goes on and on, but this is an example of how we're taking this information about the large landowners and filtering it down into action. 
Okay, so that's it for me. I'm going to turn it over to Courtney Blaschka. Courtney is the Director of Community Forestry and Conservation at Holden Forests and Gardens, and she's going to talk to us about the Forest City Working Group. So hi, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear me. I'm Courtney, again, with um, Holden Forests and Gardens, and I'm also co-chair of the Forest City Working Group, along with Kathy Len, who organized this session. And I'm here to just tell you about the work we're doing. Um, the Forest City Working Group is open to all people interested in growing and maintaining trees in Greater Cleveland. And the idea of this group was born from the Sustainable Cleveland Summit back in, I believe, 2013, and has grown to about 250 members since its inception. So we strive to provide updates, uh, projects, resources to our members so that they can stay involved in caring for the trees in Cleveland. Next. So as mentioned in Jason's talk, uh, there are nine different action items outlined in the Cleveland Tree Plan that will help reduce the trend of canopy loss. And the Forest City Working Group is really responsible for action two, which is to develop and implement an outreach and education strategy uh, with a specific focus on step five of action two, which is to develop a landmark tree program and step eight of action two, which is to make Arbor Day uh, a true celebration in Cleveland institution. Next slide, please. So as you can see on this page here, it's so small, but it's um, taking a look on the left-hand side of the screen there of a massive white oak tree in Lakeview Cemetery that was part of the forest when Moses Cleveland landed on the banks of the Cuyahoga River back in 1796. Um, this tree and many, many other century-old trees were believed to have been here during the founding of Cleveland and they're cataloged as Moses Cleveland trees. So they were designated by Arthur B. Williams in 1946 and they were selected for their beauty and for their accessibility to the public. They're scattered throughout municipalities of Cuyahoga County and they're located along highways, streets, uh, parks, trails, other places where they might be really easily seen and appreciated by the public. So several members of the Forest City Working Group are conducting, I call it a treasure hunt, <laughs> to find these remaining Moses Cleveland trees create a registry in the form of an online map that includes the location, the size, the condition, um, calculates the ecosystem benefits that these trees provide, as well as photographs of these gentle giants. We really want to create this awareness campaign so that people appreciate trees. They, they are then inspired to advocate for them in their community. So we want to foster an admiration for the remote remaining uh, Moses Cleveland trees, draw attention, to their importance in our urban forest. And we're also working on surveying the 800 Liberty Oaks that were planted throughout Cleveland Heights, Shaker Heights and Cleveland in 1919 as a living memorial to honor World War I soldiers from the Cleveland area who lost their lives during the war. So again, these programs are an effective way to educate the public about the benefits that these large trees provide, preserve existing canopy, and are an important part of developing the public's appreciation of trees. Uh, next slide, please. So again, on the left is a picture of A.B. Williams, Arthur B. Williams, measuring the circumference of a Moses Cleveland tree. And on the right are some of our, our four city group members, uh, Lisa Moranti and Kevin Jones. Uh, they're measuring the diameter of a Moses Cleveland tree in Cleveland and have found it to be alive and well. So the trees, the last, the last full inventory of these trees was done in 1971. Next slide, please. And here's what we got coming up for 2021. It's the 225th anniversary of the founding of Cleveland. So we are working to plan something really special to highlight these really majestic trees and other landmark trees in the community. Um, how will we celebrate? Well, you'll have to join the group and find out Hopefully you have some good ideas for us. Next, please. And along with the landmark tree registry, as I mentioned, we also work to make Arbor Day in Cleveland a bigger and better event every year. So in case you didn't know, 
Arbor Day is a holiday, which fall um, holiday in which individuals and groups are really encouraged to plant trees. It falls on the last Friday in April every year, last Friday in April. So mark your calendars this year for April 20th, 2021. Next, please. Um, along with Arbor Day and our landmark tree registry, the Forest City Working Group also works to connect you to all things involving trees and happening with trees in Cleveland and surrounding areas. So if you're on currently on the email link, you'll know that Kathy finds every link possible to send you so that you're aware of everything going on. Um, it's a really great place to kind of connect with our grassroots groups like these different tree steward spinoff groups, like the West Side Tree Stewards, the Tremont Tree Initiatives, and the Heights Tree people. Um, it's a good place to also hear about updates to the Cleveland Tree Plan, grant opportunities, and a way to stay on top of, on all things involving trees with all the different organizations, whether it's Holden or watershed groups or Cuyahoga Soil and Water, uh, LEAP, the Lake Erie Allegheny Partnership. We are all providing information at this meeting. Next, please. Um, this. Photo set was submitted by Dan Lehman of the Tremont Tree Initiative, and I just really wanted to kind of give him a shout out here. So to check out these before and after photos of a street beautification project where they planted 34 trees. Next. And a nice shot here of their group in action watering these newly planted trees. Next. So we hope that you will join us, join the Forest City Working Group in helping our efforts to preserve our natural heritage and make strides in reforesting Cleveland. Um, if you'd like to join, I know that there are some links in the chat. So you can email Kathy Len at the address shown there. And um, thanks. And I really hope to see you all in person soon. Uh, terrific. Thank you, Courtney. Um, so I'd like to ask our panelists to bring your um, cameras and mics back on. We're going to have some discussion here. Um, I've just been keeping tabs on the chat. Thank you very much for participating and submitting your questions and comments as we've been talking. There have been a couple of questions about the City Tree Commission. And so Jason, I'm wondering if you have any updates about that. Yeah. So. The city has a, on the, in the codified ordinances, a tree commission. It's outlined in existing codified ordinance 16301-03. It's been, I guess I would say, effectively dormant since the early 2000s. And I think as we kind of went back, as the, we started having some discussion around this, there are several factors, I think, that have contributed to that. Um, the creation of the Office of Sustainability and the role that we've taken on in terms of the long-term planning and goal setting, um, some of the changes to our funding structure on the administrative side, some of the work through the um, Forest City Working Group around education and outreach and the integration of that into the tree plan and, and the tree coalition effort. But I think probably one of the biggest drivers has been the increased uh, professionalization in our urban forestry shop. Um, I saw a question in the chat. I, was, I apologize. I was trying to listen and then do the chat and, and, and I saw a question in whether or not we have any certified arborists um, on the city staff. We do. We actually have five certified arborists on the staff. So over the last several years, we've worked to grow that, expand that, um, add in ISA certified resources throughout the process. Um, so really, the Tree Coalition has come back up. Um, a couple of council members have introduced an ordinance to reestablish the Tree Commission with um, a slightly different appointment structure and a slightly different set of duties. Um, I think we've 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 had a, some concerns, and I don't want to get too deep into the weeds of what exactly all of those are around um, how those duties integrate with the existing efforts. Um, we've had a couple of discussions with it at the City Planning Commission. Um, uh, the legislation, due to some internal legal requirements, got routed through City Planning for administrative review, and they've asked us to have some conversations um, from the administrative side with the council side about some of our concerns, some of their thoughts, to see if we can find a solution to that issue. Um, it didn't happen between the first planning commission meeting and the second planning commission meeting. Um, I, I've had an offline conversation with one of the, the, the sponsors that we're working to get that set up, that discussion set up now. Thank you. Um, I'm seeing some questions. 
lessons. Uh, I've seen, seen shout outs about um, Word 11 and Word 15. But the, the question is, um, you know, what can residents do to reforest specific geographies that they care about? So maybe their, um, their own neighborhood or their ward. Um, who would be the context for them there? Well, I'll, I'll start. I think there's a couple of ways to approach that. And I think there's there's a public side, um, um, some, some public right of way and some public side planning options. And then I'll leave it to others to talk about on the private side as well. Um, I mentioned one of that kind of fourth barrier to um, what we're seeing are high refusal rates. So one of the things we started, and actually I think we just launched it last week or the week before, is this um, there's an online form, and I think we might have dropped it in here, and if not, I'll drop it into the chat, or, or Kathy or, or Patty can drop it into the chat. Um, you can actually go online and, requ and request a right-of-way tree. So if you've got a, a, a location you think would be a good spot for a street tree, um, fill out this form. Somebody from our urban forestry, one of our arborists will come out, they'll do an evaluation, they'll assess whether or not you're a good candidate, if so, what type of tree would be right. And then so you can actually request to have a, the city plant a tree in front of your house as long as the space is good and it's an appropriate plantable location. Thank you. Courtney, I think this is a good question for you. Um, can you tell us about what action is being taken against volcano mulching and, educa and educating land, um, landscapers in Northeast Ohio about best management practices? Yeah, I think many members of the, the Cleveland Tree Coalition are working to educate landscapers. Um, I know Soil and Water has done some, some different, had some different programs to educate landscapers, and we at Holden Forest and Gardens are working through our Tree Core program to expand and create a short course um, to educate landscapers and not only how to plant, but also how to maintain trees in the areas that they work in. I'll, because this links a little bit to the roadmap that we were talking about too in the large landowner study is some of this activism is going to come from the client side. Also, if we can educate businesses and people who hire contractors about what they should be seeing um, from contractors and the maintenance of trees, then they can start to request that their contractors become certified, use best management practices, etc. But right now what we're seeing is that landscape contractors have a bit of free reign because we trust that when we hire them that they're gonna know how best to take care of the plants on our property and that's not always true. Um, I will also say the Ohio Landscaping Association has been active in the, in the Cleveland Tree Coalition um, and so it would be worth re-engaging them now um, to, to talk with them again about some best management practices. Let's see. Um, Jason, I think this question might be for you. This comes from Councilman Brancatelli. When will the city create a permit application for a resident to get permission to plant a tree on their tree lawn? Uh, a permit application, I believe, and I wish Jen, Jennifer Kipp, who's our urban forester, was here. I, I think there may be I don't have a good answer to that, Councilman. I'll, I will get to one for you, though, and we can get it out to everybody as well. Um, yeah, I'll get an answer for that. And this question is maybe, um, you know, also with relation to tree lawn trees, this is from Leslie Lahr. She's asking, or they're asking, how can residents refuse a tree lawn tree when at the same time we're not allowed to maintain a tree um, because your, our city owns it? It, it's a tricky balance for us. Um, in a lot of instances, it comes down to balancing the property owner rights, right? So our tree, so we don't want to force a tree in a, into a position where the property owner doesn't want it. Um, it comes to kind of balancing down, you know, working with property owners and not, not forcing something into the, their life that they may not be comfortable with. Um, there is this misperception in some instances where trees can do damage to your sidewalk or they can cause damage to your sewer line and other util underground utilities in the area. And it evolves from some real experiences that people have had um, where we may not have 
historically as a city put the right tree in the right place. Um, but if we do it and balance it right, we try to ha try to, to convert those refusals into plannings, but it's not always it's not always successful for us. Yeah, we were just talking with um, some uh, another organization, the Greening of Detroit, about a study that they had that about 25 percent of residents in Detroit refuse tree line trees. Um, in Cleveland, you know, we also have just a, a long legacy of our city being under resourced and um, you know, trees posing a danger um, to cars and pedestrians uh, by dropping branches, and that's a big deterrent for folks. Um, so as we see some of the changes that Jason outlined in his talk being implemented toward better maintenance of trees, more proactive maintenance, um, then hopefully that'll also start to change minds about people who want to accept trees. Um, Elizabeth, this uh, question is for you. Could you tell us a little bit more about um, the 100 trees that you're giving away this Saturday? Sure. Um, we are giving away, we've used the community canopy program through the Arbor Day Foundation several times to give away trees um, to residents of the city of Cleveland. We decided um, this year to try to try to do it ourselves. So on Saturday, we have purchased 100 trees from a nursery. They are being delivered tomorrow. Um, and at Riddle Green Partnership, I don't have the I think it's in the chat. I don't have, I don't know the address offhand. Um, we will be giving away a um, hundred trees. So I, I'll share that in the chat in a second. Um, but you have, you do have to sign up in advance, um, but there are trees still available and they're limited to residents of the city of Cleveland. Um, they're not little seedlings or saplings, they're nice sized trees. Um, and they are all part included in the Cleveland tree plan. They're approved by the Cleveland tree plan. Oh, I also wanted to add one other thing that um, as far as residents getting involved in planting trees in their neighborhood, um, we will we'll be um, hosting a virtual tree steward training program in uh, 20, early 2021. So I'll share that um, in the chat as well. Basically, it's a volunteer training program, training volunteers in tree biology, planting, and maintenance. Um, and we'd love to have folks that live in the city of Cleveland register for that. Um, this next question I'll give to Courtney. Um, Courtney, in your knowledge. Um, is there a mycelium network that supports urban trees? So Marina knows that forests have mycelium networks, but they're not sure how that works for urban forests. Can you talk a little bit about soil ecology there? Um, a little bit, yeah, because we are exploring also partnerships with um, groups like Rust Belt Riders and Ridall, which create different soil products, which have a lot of just a lot of nutrients and these beneficial mycelium. So um, we're trying to figure out ways to make those products available pre-planting and to do a lot of the prep work so that the tree is planted in an environment where it's got a lot of the nutrients. Um, I'm sure most people know here that urban soils are denuded of uh, soil nutrients and really alkaline. So getting that information into the hands of the public will be really helpful in the future. If I could piggyback on that, Maria, I'm not sure if you made it earlier to the discussion around the draw, urban drawdown initiative. That is one of the things that we're having some discussions through that effort as well. Um, are there ways to support improvements in the types of soils and, and to supplement what we're doing on the planning side to help? So for our last two minutes, I have a quick question for the attendees and also our panelists. When you think about all of the benefits that trees provide, so increased property values, air quality improvements and how that affects asthma, um, other health effects, stress, prop, um, et cetera, storm water. Which of those benefits are most compelling for you personally um, and that you think make good arguments for trees and, and why? So um, Elizabeth, um, well, for our participants, if you could just put in the chat which benefit of trees most compels you. Um, but Elizabeth, what is your, um, most compelling argument for trees based on the benefits they provide? Um, oh, put me on the spot. Uh, no, um, 
uh, I think just the, the, the human health benefits of trees um, are what really motivates our work. Um, the fact that folks that live in some of the neighborhoods that are most challenged um, by other socioeconomic factors, planting trees can help mitigate those factors or something that impacts um, both the physical and mental health of the people that live in Cleveland neighborhoods. And I think that's what's important to us and feel, and that's how we feel we can make a difference. I was at first very glad you didn't come to me first. And now, now I'm, I'm sad because Elizabeth stole mine. It's got to be the human health dimension for us. We, we know as a city and community, we have some very real challenges around um, the, the disparate impacts of social determinants of health on residents. And we have a great opportunity to use some of our sustainable and environmental solutions to address those and trees are just one piece of that larger puzzle. So I, I'll agree with Elizabeth, the human health side of it is critically important. Thank you. Courtney? Jump on this bandwagon as well. Um, um, just wanna bring back that bumper sticker that says, you know, trees are the answer because no matter what the question is, trees seem to be able to solve that answer. And after going through such a hot, dry summer here, for me, you know, the answer was shade and producing some um, some refuge from the hot summer sun. So I appreciate trees for all they do. Yeah, um, I, just for um, time's sake, I will also say shade and cooling, particularly with the predicted effects of climate change. Um, that would be my favorite. So thank you. We've come to the end of our session. Thank you for talking about Cleveland's green gold, our trees. Um, thanks very much to our panelists for your presentations. And we look forward to, if you'd like to reach out, uh, join the Forest City Working Group. You can also reach out to the Cleveland Tree Coalition. Our contact is at clevelandtrees.org. Um, thanks very much. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Chief. Bye, everybody.